In this video, I'm going to show you how you can install and configure the Northwind database so that you can use it for your Power BI reports. We're going to go through it from scratch from the very beginning. So installing the SQL Server and then eventually creating the database for the Northwind database and how you connect to it from your locally hosted server. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fernand and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel where we cover tips, tricks, and best practices when working with RBI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So if you've been around with the channel long enough, you must have seen me using the Northwind database for a lot of my demos. And the sample data set is essentially something that the Microsoft team has provided. And it's very useful because of its structure, which sort of mimics a kind of live database which you can then use to test out your measures or tricks or just maybe just make simple reports from it. So since I am recording from my new laptop from my machine and it doesn't have any SQL Server or the Northwind database installed, I figured I'd go through the process of what you would take step by step from the very beginning to getting this installed into your laptop so that you can start working with the Northwind database in your reports. The first thing that you need to do is you need to make Make sure that you download and install the SQL Server Developer Edition. So this is basically an express installation that installs the majority of the packages that you will need. And uh, I've already opened the website where you will be able to download and install it. I'll leave a link to all of these website pages in the description box below for you. So what you'll need to do is from this website, you'll just need to go down here and install the developer version or download the developer version of this. We're going to go and install it. Well, let's download the installer in our desktop for now. And let's go ahead and install that. So it's just giving me an option here. And we're just going to go with the basic one. We'll hit accept here. And I'm just going to change where that is being stored. I mean, you just you can just keep it to your C drive as you normally would, but I prefer to keep it in a different area here. I'm just going to create a folder here. To, and I'm going to hit install. So we'll just give it a few minutes until it's done. Fantastic. So now the installation is complete. So you notice that it downloaded and installed the majority of the packages that we'll need. And it's even created a local host server for us to start working with. Now, in order to start working with uh, servers and databases, you need to be using the SQL Server Management Studio, which is the one that I typically use. And it doesn't come as part of this installation. So you'll need to install that separately in order to kind of manage that. So you'll need to follow this link, install SSMS, which will take you to this screen, which is right here. I'll also leave a link uh, below, the link for this specific page. It will just take you to this uh, Microsoft page here, which it will allow you to get this link to download the SMS. So let's download it and let's try to install it. So let's just give it a few minutes to download. Okay, so now that that's downloaded, let's just install SSMS here. So I'm just going to open it and it's going to ask me where to install it. So like before, you can either leave it to your C drive, which is where everyone typically keeps it. But I'm going to keep my my one somewhere else. I'm going to keep it in my D drive. So we'll just give it a few minutes to install. Okay, hey, so now we have installed the SSMS. Let's try now and let's open up the SQL Server Management Studio. So let me just open it up here. So I'm just going to type SQL Server Management Studio to open it up. And what it's doing is it's asking me to connect to a server, which in this case, we're just going to use localhost because that is what the SQL Server that we installed earlier created for us. So when I hit connect, it will just open up the screen. So this means that we are pretty much ready to work with a server to install our databases. So the last thing that we need to do is to install and create those different tables and columns around Northwind database. Now I'm going to open up the screen here, which is the last 
place that we need to download. I promise we're almost finished. So here is the GitHub link where the SQL command is for installing the Northwind database. So here, we there are a few things here. The one that you need is the second one. This one install northwind.sql. So if you click on that, it will open up a SQL script here, which you can then use. So you can use this button at the top here to copy a raw file. And these are basically just a list of scripts that you that will create the Northwind data database for you. We're going to go back to the SQL Server Management Studio. We're first going to create the database because the script doesn't create the database for you. You have to create it yourself. So we're just going to name this one Northwind. And I hit OK. And then we're going to right click here and just new query. Just make sure. So when you do the North, the new query, it will automatically use the target targeting the database. Just make sure that it's pointing to the same database. And then we'll just paste that raw file that we have just copied. And then we'll just hit execute from here. Just give it a few seconds and it should be done. So let's hit refresh here. So right click the refresh. And now if we expand on this database under tables, Hopefully, there we go. So you should be able to see all of the tables that you need for the Northwind sample data set. So for example, if we go to the simple one, like maybe the customers, if I select the top 1000 rows, as you can see, it just gives us a preview of all of those different customers that we have, which we can now use for our reporting or for our, yeah, for Power BI reporting purposes. So how do we use this in Power BI? So let's open up Power BI. So here is Power BI Desktop. And from here, what we need to do is get data, and get data from a SQL server. Now from the SQL server, we're just going to type a local host and the database. Uh, we can specify Northwind because we know that's the database name, but you don't need to specify that. You can just browse through if you have more database in that server. So we'll leave everything as it is. We'll just hit OK here. And there you go. So you now or we now have access to all of those different tables and columns in the Northwind database for our reporting. So you have a few things here, like different views. I uh, don't really use these, but these are basically just pre-made tables or pre-made views for reporting if we needed to. But since we want the raw tables and create our relationships within Power BI, we'll just select tables here like so. So we'll click on the typical ones that I import, order details, categories, products. And I typically adjust and remove some of the columns that I don't need. But for now, let's just keep them as they are. Hit load. Just give it a few few seconds. And there you go. So you now have the Northwind database at your fingertips to create your own Power BI reports on it. And that's really it for this video. I hope that's helped you understand how you can install the SQL Server and eventually the Northwind database so you can utilize it when you're creating your Power BI reports. Thanks for watching. As usual, give this video a like if you found it useful. You would a dislike if you didn't, so enough to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.